Annenberg Media conducted a survey of USC students who find out their presidential to find out their presidential preferences and find out which candidate USC students think will win the election. Forty unclaimed bikes at USC's Lost and Found are about to find a new home. Many USC apartment buildings are not up to date with the new Los Angeles earthquake standards. I'll give you more details about which buildings might be in danger if we experience the next great shake. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. We spent three days talking to USC students about who they think should be president and who they predict will win the White House. Annenberg students conducted a survey to find out who's voting and who USC students want as their next president. Good evening, I'm Kelly Rinke. And I'm Daniel Tran. The survey done last week was the first ever presidential survey by Annenberg Media. Presidential candidates on both sides are fighting for every single delegate. USC Annenberg Media questioned more than 200 students. Here are the results. 58.2% of the 134 students who describe themselves as Democrats or independents prefer Bernie Sanders. 41.8% said they would vote for Clinton. And on the Republican side, 40.9% of the 22 respondents who describe themselves as Republicans would vote for John Kasich. 31.8% said Donald Trump and 27.3% said Ted Cruz. When we add the 65 students who didn't state a party preference, Sanders stayed ahead of Clinton. 58.3% to 41.7%. Kasich remained on top of the Republican field with 44%, but Cruz overtook Trump with 35.6% to Trump's 19.5%. Now joining us uh, here in the studio are Annenberg Media's political directors, Max Schwartz and Allie Main. How are you guys doing today? Fine, thank you. Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Now, I had a question about the, stu the study itself. How was it conducted? So it was conducted April 11th through April 13th on both the University Park campus and in Washington, D.C. with the 17 students we had there. And we had a team of, I believe, six pollsters go out at various times of that day, uh, of those three days, to ask people these, these, their, prefer their preference when it comes to presidential candidates, among other questions relating to the election. Gotcha. Now, based on the primary results, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are pretty likely to uh, represent their re respective parties. Uh, how did they uh, kind of compare to each other? Right, we did ask a question on the survey about if Clinton and Trump were the candidates for their respective parties, um, which the students would vote for regardless of what their preferences were, and the overwhelming majority did choose Clinton oh, wow. over Trump. Now, I know Bernie Sanders has been on kind of a hot streak winning a couple states in the primaries, but he's been lagging behind in the delegates. Uh, what happens to Bernie Sanders supporters uh, if he doesn't get the nomination. Yeah, we analyzed uh, some results on that, and of the question, um, Clinton versus Trump, those who did identify as Bernie and as Democrats, um, out of those, the majority of those said that they would choose Clinton in that scenario. So several of those would go to Clinton. Gotcha. All right, uh, so I know that we um, had more survey results. Uh, Max, why don't you tell me more about that? So 63.1%, and this is of who people believe will be president, 63.1% of the 233 students surveyed think Clinton will win the election. 15% said Sanders, 6.4% said Trump, 2.6% said Cruz, and 0.4% said Kasich. Another 12.5% selected someone other than these five candidates or left the question blank. We also asked about voter registration. 68.2% said that they are registered, 19.3% said they're not, and 12.5% said they are not eligible voters. Thank you, Max and Allie, for joining us today. Uh, stay with USC Annenberg Media for all of your vote 2016 coverage, and follow along tomorrow when New York voters go to the polls. For the primary in New York tomorrow, 247 delegates are up for grabs for the Democrats and 95 delegates for the Republicans. Trump is leading his GOP opponents. He's campaigning in Manhattan before heading to Buffalo. We love this city. You look at the other folks that are running. They couldn't care less about New York. That's right. We do care about New York. Yes. We care about New York a lot. And we care about New York values. In the meantime, Cruz is campaigning in Maryland. The state's primary is not until April 26th, but voters are casting ballots through Thursday and early voting. 
Do we nominate Donald Trump and hand the election to Hillary Clinton? Or do we unite behind the Cruz campaign and beat Hillary Clinton? Kasich will also be campaigning in Maryland tomorrow, but today he's hosting events in New York. Earlier, he spoke in Syracuse and talked about how he's going to fight ISIS. I think the most significant way to handle the problem with ISIS is a coalition of the Arab Muslim countries along with the West, along with the United States, and let's just go get the job done. Bernie Sanders went on a walking tour of low-income public housing in Brooklyn. Then he talked about the affordable housing crisis in New York and the nation. We have got to change our national priorities. We invest in our children. We invest in affordable housing. And by the way, when we do that, you create millions of jobs rebuilding deteriorating housing, providing opportunities. Hillary Clinton stopped at St. John's Riverside Hospital on her last day of campaigning in New York. She continued to encourage people to get out and vote. I will stand up and fight for you through this campaign and into the White House. Voters will also be able to cast ballots starting at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Ecuador and Japan are still recovering from deadly uh, earthquakes that ravaged both countries. More than 450 people are dead and thousands more are injured. Those numbers are expected to rise while rescue teams continue to dig through the rubble. The earthquake hit Ecuador Saturday evening and registered a... Uh, 7.8 on the Richter scale. On the other side of the world, the southernmost island of Japan was hit with two earthquakes, a 6.2 last Thursday and a 7.0 on Saturday. Ecuador has the most casualties so far. The earthquake caused an overpass to buckle and trapped drivers in Guayaquil, a town closer to the epicenter. Uh, in a town closer to the epicenter, a shopping mall partially collapsed. According to Ecuador's National Emergency Management Office, the most damage occurred in the Manabí province where 200 people have died. The Japanese government mobilized 25,000 members on the Japan Self-Defense Force to help the rescue effort. There have been over 150 aftershocks since Saturday. According to the region's disaster management office, nearly 92,000 citizens have been evacuated. Los Angeles just released a list of 13,500 apartment buildings that need to be retrofitted. Several of those are owned by USC. Let's toss it over to Annenberg Media's Caroline Disley for more about what USC is doing to make sure its buildings can withstand earthquakes. Thanks, Daniel. I'm here outside Century Apartments, one of the complexes that was listed on the LA Times report that said it's not safe if there were to be an earthquake, according to the new earthquake standards. Now, according to this report, this complex and many others around USC do not meet the new safety regulations. Therefore, they must either be retrofitted or demolished. The students who live here go through earthquake safety training, but they were not prepared for the news that the actual infrastructure of their apartment building is not up to county standards. It just makes me wonder if, you know, the guidelines that we're telling people are as accurate as they should be, because I want to make sure that the residents know exactly what to do in the event of an earthquake. Other complexes include university-owned Fairmount Apartments on Portland Street, The Spot on 30th Street, and its next-door neighbor, Carnot and Gold Apartments. To check and see if your complex is on the list, Go to our website, uscannenbergmedia.com. The next step for property owners, including USC University officials, is to decide whether to demolish the building or pay to have the complex retrofitted, a project that could cost owners sixty dollars to $130,000. They will have two years to either submit proof that the apartment meets these standards or fix the issue. So the, the, the fixes are actually relatively straightforward. The, the main issue is that somebody has to do the work who's a professional and professional work costs money and people just don't want to spend the money on it. Some apartment buildings have already ready made this simple but costly fix. So some officials argue that the report in the LA Times isn't necessarily 100% accurate. Basically in buildings, um, 
a lot of them were inaccurate on the LA Times list in the past. Uh, a lot of those buildings didn't even exist, never existed. Several of those buildings had already been torn down and new buildings have been built. But, but I do know that the university is very proactive. Every year, they're always retrofitting different buildings and they move through that list every year. Official orders will be sent out by May and then property owners will have two years to make the decision whether to have the area demolished or to go through the retrofitting process. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Caroline. Today, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments over President Obama's executive action on immigration. The president's order would shield more than 4 million undocumented immigrants from deportation. Texas and 25 other states are trying to stop the president's order from going into effect. Protesters on both sides rallied outside the Supreme Court. Justices are expected to reach a decision by June. If they hold the president's plan, it would go into effect by the end of his term. Immigration advocates held their own rally in downtown L.A. They are hoping the Supreme Court will make it possible to expand DACA, the program that protects undocumented children. Once I graduated, I was still undocumented at the time, so I actually couldn't work in my field. So I had to do things like a lot of immigrants do, babysitting, um, tutoring, just things that are very well paying. But then when DACA came out, as soon as that came out, I was able to get a work permit and then I became a therapist and worked with kids with special needs. The president's plan would also expand a program known as DAPA. That would protect parents of citizens and lawful permanent residents. What the DACA and the DAPA programs are um, is an effort on the part of the administration to make some choices about who do we go after to deport. Do we go after people who are criminals? Do we go after people who have you know, committed fraud in some respect? Um, uh, do we want to use the limited resources that Congress has given us to go after the, the, the bad guys, if you will? And what do we do about all of the other people who are not the bad guys, who are just living working, paying taxes, going to school. The Supreme Court seemed divided on the issue, and a 4-4 ruling is possible. Even if the court decides the president has the power to expand these programs, another president could reverse course. Winners of this year's Pulitzer Prize are out tonight. Hear the behind-the-scenes story from one of the award-winning journalists. And civic leaders and activists kicked off a campaign to raise awareness about transgender community. And this week, our weather anchor, Veronica Casado, will take us into a Peruvian restaurant. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. The Pulitzer Prize winners were announced today. The Los Angeles Times, the Associated Press, and the Washington Post were among the recipients. For me to be part of the team who, who's done such incredible work, it just means a lot because it shows this is you know something that still matters. It shows that we can still do really good work and put out stories that show you know victims of these tragedies will not be forgotten. I really think that that's what this work is about. 
The Los Angeles Times won in the category of Breaking News Prize for its coverage of the San Bernardino shootings. AP won their Public Service Prize for exposing slave labor in the Southeast Asian fishing industry. And the Washington Post received the National Reporting Award on investigation of killings by police. For more, go to USCAnnabermedia.com. A new initiative called Transform California launched on the steps of City Hall today. 30 coalitions are joining together to raise awareness about the transgender community. Transgender individuals have a much higher rate of murder and suicide and assault and discrimination. It's just terrible and it's about time we did something about it. Eric Garcetti signed a pledge to end discrimination against transgenders. Several transgenders shared their experiences and expressed their commitment to educating Los Angeles and the nation about the issues they face. Transform California is an important, unprecedented statewide campaign to transform equality and awareness for transgender and gender nonconforming folks here in California. This is unprecedented because this is the first campaign of its kind here in California and it will only expand nationwide. The new coalition pledges to hold rallies across the state in the next few months. These rallies will be aimed at reducing violence and ending discrimination against the transgender community. 40 bikes from USC's Lost and Found will soon be given to local high school students. Annabur Media's Claudia Buccio shows us why they're getting bikes for free. About 40 high school students came to USC to find out about the bikes that will be donated to their schools. USC Caruso Catholic Center student president Yvette Jimenez came up with the idea for the bike donation program when her own bike was stolen. And at the parking center I just saw hundreds of bikes. Um, and, you know, I got to choose the bike for myself to replace the one that was stolen. And from there, like I told him, hey, all, all these bikes are just like here. Like what's going on with them? And he said, yeah, well, students just don't claim them. So I asked him if I can have some. And he says, yeah, yeah, of course you can. DPS agreed to clean up 40 bikes for the students. These students from St. Pius X and St. Matthias Academy, Verbum Day and Cathedral were on campus today. The general criteria that the USC Caruso Catholic Center set up for these students to receive the bike was to be a good student. And by that, it not necessarily meant to be a straight-A student or to be the star athlete, rather than someone who is willing to serve his or her community. One of the questions they had to answer was, you know, what are your plans for the, what are you going to do with this bike? Um, most of them uh, said they're going to do the same thing that the students did here, was take them with them to college. Um, some of them will probably ride the bike into school in the morning as well. After some lunch, the high school students share their plans for their new bikes. I've been in need of a bike for a while so I can get, uh, you know, to and from work. Just cruise with it, like, probably go to a beach. I plan to hang out with my friends, bike, bike out to the beach. Father Samuel Ward blessed the future bike riders who will receive their bikes as early as Wednesday. Reporting for Annenberg Media, I'm Claudia Buccio. Well, it's definitely a nice day to ride a bike today. Oh, I completely agree. It's nice and sunny outside and warm. Uh, let's toss it over to Veronica, our weather anchor. Thanks, Dan and Kelly. Yeah, we had a warm, perfect weekend. Hopefully, you all got some spend some time outside to enjoy that sun. And for the most part, things are expected to stay the same throughout the week. But first, let's take a look at the current conditions. Right now, we're at 71 degrees. It's still warm outside. For tomorrow, we are expected to see... 53 degrees up in Big Bird, still cold up there, but down by Riverside and San Bernardino, it's going to be pretty warm still in Palm Springs, 88. Up in the north, we have 70s in the valleys and 66 down by the coast. Now coming back down to USC, we're going to have 68 degrees in, at USC, Glendale and Long Beach and Ontario at 73. Now for the five-day forecast, we're going to have a warm week, 84 degrees on Tuesday, and it's going to go down to 70 on Saturday. Peru is known for its ancient ruins like Machu Picchu and its natural beauty like the Inca Trail. I would love to go to Peru, but it isn't exactly the cheapest flight. So for this week's venture with Veronica, I decided to visit a Peruvian restaurant, El Rocoto. You can expect to wait an hour to be seated on the weekends at El Rocoto, but customers say the authentic Peruvian food is worth the wait. Because my nephew says he wants arroz con pollo, that's the reason I bring him over here. And see me so ready, Peru. Heidi Roman visits El Rocoto because she loves the saltado de pollo, which is a chicken stir fry with French fries and rice. You know, because people told you about the food is good, you need to try it. Since nearly half of Peru is on the coast, 
you can expect to see a lot of seafood on the menu. We fish, we shrimp, we calamares. We have all different kinds of seafoods over there in Peru. Roman says whether the food is from the land or the sea, Rocotos has excellent dishes that remind her of home. El Rocoto is in Gardena on West Artesia Boulevard. It is a semi-fancy place, so you can expect their dishes to range from $10 to $50, but it is a perfect place to go for a date or to celebrate a special day. What do you guys think of that? Every time I see one of your packages, <laughs> I immediately get hungry and my mouth is watering. Well, now you guys have somewhere to go on this warm weekend that we're going to have. Well, yeah, I completely agree. Thank you so much, Veronica. You're welcome. Thank you. It was a big day for Normandy Elementary as faculty and students received the 2016 Civic Engagement Award. I am so honored to present you with the 2016 Civics Learning Award plaque to Normandy Avenue Elementary School. Congratulations. The California Department of Education and Judicial Branch of California honored Normandy for its active involvement in helping the community through the programs such as the Boy and Girl Scouts. Well, it seems sports in sports, things in sports seem to be calming down just a little bit, but I know that you're a huge Lakers fan, so are you still a little bit emotional about Kobe's retirement? Yeah, I feel like there's a big <laughs> hole where my heart used to be Oh no! Kobe's <laughs> gone, but Randall, please give me some good news. <laughs> It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. USC women's lacrosse has put their undefeated record and number one ranking on the line against Notre Dame. Let's see how the ladies fared in South Bend. The ladies held on to get a close win over the sixth ranked Irish 5-4. The ladies are now ranked fifth overall and they are earning every bit of it. The women's golf team is also in action today as they compete in the Pac-12 championships. The second ranked women of Troy have just finished up the first round of play. And at the end of day one, the women of Troy are sitting at the top. UCLA is right behind them in second and Arizona is in third. The ladies will compete two more days to see if they can capture the fourth USC conference title in school history. If they can pull it off, it will be the first conference championship since 2013. USC football finished up the spring season this weekend. 23,000 fans attended the spring game to find out what's in store for the 2016 season and who's going to be the next Trojan quarterback. Max Brown and Sam Darnold combined for five touchdown passes. Three of those went to Juju Smith-Schuster, and Justin Davis added a pair of scores on the ground. It looks like head coach Clay Helton's first spring as head coach, he has quite the decision to make. Coach Helton met with us and said, I mean, he's got the luxury of having two great quarterbacks, two future NFL quarterbacks, and the best guy's going to play, and so it's kind of my job to work my tail off this offseason and come ready to go in the fall. We will see who's calling the signals when USC opens the 2016 season up against defending national champion Alabama on September 3rd. The Trojans and the Crimson Tide will duke it out in Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The USC track team showed up and showed out at the Mount Sec Relays this weekend. In an event known for showcasing some of the world's best athletes, the Trojan men and women held their own. 
This year's contest has held at, was held at Cerritos College, but the site switch didn't stop the Trojans as they performed well across the board. Sophomores Kendall Ellis and Ricky Morgan Jr. both won the 400 meters. Adore Jackson placed fourth, but tied his best season uh, record in the men's invite long jump. You may know Jackson a little bit more for his dynamic play on the football field, but with the Olympic trials coming up, the team has been supportive and letting him focus on giving his best. Of course, I'm going to miss being out there and not being on my boys playing, but I'm trying, hopefully I'm making them proud by jumping out here and competing against everybody. Jackson and the Trojans will try to keep improving as the outdoor season picks up. Next, they have the Triton Invitational this weekend in La Jolla, California. The beach volleyball team is number one, thanks in big part to Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes. The dynamic duo is 31-0 on the season. We're just playing our game and yeah. we're doing what we need to do, so just winning comes with that. But I don't know, I think it's working out well for us and it's, it is really fun to win, but you know, we're, we're in it for the team and um, it's been an exciting season so far. Get this, Clays and Hughes have teamed up for a total of 56 wins straight. With a duo like that, the women of Troy could be a lock to win the Pac-12 in May. Their next match is, in Aloha, is the Aloha Invitational in Hawaii. Now I'm going back to the track to highlight my rising star of the week. Sophomore and 800 meter runner Robert Ford is getting closer to making his mark in the USC record books. I'm happy with my season so far, you know, just following my coach's orders and stuff like that and just going with the motions, but you know, we're definitely expecting a lot more out of the season, hopefully shave off another second. So it's excited to see what the rest of the season holds. USC shine, so that could take away a little bit of that Kobe pain for you. <laughs> thank you so much, Randall. <laughs> All right, thank you. A Trojan will be cheering on the LA Rams next season after being chosen out of hundreds of applicants. Earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake. And you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake today. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's up? What's happening today? Yeah. 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 Yeah